Today on the show, we're taking a look at the official comic adaptation of the Warner Brothers motion picture, Batman Forever. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to Comic Ed and TV, where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. As I said today, we're taking a look at the official comic adaptation of the Warner Brothers motion picture, Batman Forever. Uh, Dennis O'Neill, Michael Dukwitzk, uh, Scott Hanna with Adrian Roy. Uh, I had this in my collection as a kid. Uh, I really loved it, loved the artwork. Uh, the movie was okay. It didn't live up to Batman and Batman Returns, but it, it was still good. They really dropped the ball with Batman and Robin, but that's another story we'll get into later. Uh, so anyway, the artwork here is very nice. It's It looks very typical. A comic book style artwork you can't make out the likenesses really of Jim Carrey or Tommy Lee Jones Val Kilmore or, or Chris O'Donnell really but here we are Batman Forever uh, writer Dennis O'Neill penciler Michael I don't know how to pronounce that inker Scott Hanna colorist Adrian Roy letterer Albert de Guzman uh, cover painting by John Hanley here we have Arkham Asylum. Uh, this, I don't really think this was part of the movie. I could be wrong. It's been so long since I've watched the movie. It might have been a deleted scene from the movie. Uh, Two-Face escaped from Arkham. And then we have Bruce Wayne, which does look like Val Kilmer here, meeting Edward Nigma for the first time. Uh, this part, it didn't really happen like this, I don't believe. During this scene, Bruce goes to his office and presses a secret button, which, sen which sends him to the Batcave from his office. Uh, it doesn't really show that in the comic here. In fact, a lot of this isn't shown in the comic, really. Uh, but we get our first look at Two-Face, and then Ch Dr. Chase Meridian, uh, specialized in dual personalities. And you know, the only real links between all four Batman films was the actor who portrayed Commissioner Gordon and the actor who portrayed Alfred Pennyworth. Those were the only two characters that remained the same through all four movies. Everyone else was recast. Batman was recast. Uh, Harvey Dent was recast. Uh, Batman's love interest was recast. If it weren't for that, you could almost say that they were completely different continuities between movies. Uh, but the art in this comic is very nice. Uh, you can see here's a scene where Two-Face takes him up in the safe and Edward Nigma. I think they kind of rushed that. Uh, from what I remember, I think Edward Nigma's scenes were a little bit later. I don't think they happened right off the bat, but I could be wrong. <laughs> bat. Right off the bat. <laughs> Batman. Right off the bat. Ah. There's a circus scene, uh, the death of the Graysons, uh, Dick Grayson showing up on his motorcycle, Sugar and Spice, which the only reason I know their names, not that they were ever said in the movie, but when the Batman Forever trading cards came out, uh, they did have their own specific trading card. Sugar, of course, was played by, I believe, Drew Barrymore. Uh, I'm not sure who played Spice, though. But anyway... They didn't really... They grasped the look of Tommy Lee Jones. G Drew, uh, Jim Carrey, they didn't really uh, get the look of that great. Very nice comic, though. Nice to have to the collection. This makes the third comic book adaptation... Comic book movie adaptation that I've got from the Batman series in my collection. Now, see, now that image right there, that looks like Jim Carrey. Uh, the other's not really that much. And I, I do think they really rushed through this comic. Uh, changed, up, changed up some scenes. I think they were working with a rough draft of the movie. Uh, I think when the movie fir first got shown to the uh, creators of the comic... The scenes were in a different order, uh, so that may be what they went off of. And then, of course, when the movie came out, it was in a completely different order, the order we're used to. But very nice. Here's the back. I actually had a hat that had this 
Batman Forever symbol on it. I liked it. I liked it a lot. There you have it, guys. The official comic adaptation of the Warner Brothers motion picture, Batman Forever. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collide. Take care, my friends. There used to be a gray and tower alone on the sea.